not advertising in your face or product uh, buy this buy that because uh, again we are not a bakery uh, we have to understand that we are dealing with people's money we have to be cautious you know when you have a, a an existing business a reputation of following clients you're a real business you know and you can prove it the crypto space usually responds fairly well to those given all the meme coins out there. There are lots of advantages of, uh, of uh, issuing a token, of course if it works well, okay, but there are also lots of inconvenience. You're watching Next Big Wave, the podcast for founders by founders in Southeast Asia. In this episode, we're going to talk about founder journeys, growth strategies and much more. Just to help me out, if you could like and subscribe, it would be awesome. And let's get into the episode. All right. Okay. So welcome to today's episode of Next Big Wave. I'm excited to have here another fellow French entrepreneur, uh, Jeff Ira. Uh, so Jeff is currently living and operating out of Singapore, where he's been for quite a while. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tim. I'm super excited to be in your show. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm super excited as well, because you're in an industry that I haven't hosted much about, which is essentially crypto, more specifically DeFi. Uh, like something that is within your uh, area of operation or expertise as you've been in finance your entire career, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, I will say uh, I started my career in the financial industry in 2008. So uh, just uh, straight after my master degree. So yeah, we can say that, yeah. And right after the financial crash. So perfect time to get into finance. Yeah, a lovely year to kickstart your career in the financial industry, indeed. Well, let's go to that because, I mean, what I want to discover is your trajectory as a person and how you ended up becoming an entrepreneur. So starting your career right at the in the middle or right after a financial crash of that magnitude, how was that? How was that? Um, I will say that uh, if I'm looking backward, uh, I may uh, think that uh, I would have seen the worst uh, somehow because uh, your, your right team, uh, it was uh, really a, a, a collapse uh, at a magnitude pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, inconceivable if you have not really uh, faced it. Um, so first of all, when you uh, discuss with some client uh, individual uh, who have uh, lost uh, maybe 50k, 100k, 150k, that's first of all something difficult. But also uh, when you uh, manage a portfolio and you found yourself having uh, um, a large amount of stock that are uh, delisted because they are just uh, the result of, uh, of, uh, of a huge uh, collapse and you have to put that into a cemetery of uh, stocks, uh, that's pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. But I think, um, I would say in terms of misconception, it is always different from managing a portfolio uh, when you are part of a huge uh, financial institution, uh, from running your own business with your own clients, your own money, uh, I think this part is uh, is even uh, I would say at a, at a different level. So somehow that was uh, a huge magnitude, uh, but 2012, 22, and and 23 in the crypto industry, all the collapse mm -hmm. was uh, also at. A, certain magnitude at my level as well. So that, that resonated with something you had experienced before? Yeah, yeah, for right. sure. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. And so, you know, being French and you actually, I, I just discovered this. I don't know if we discussed it in, in our preliminary talk, but you were born in Normandy. So we're almost yeah. neighbors uh, since I was in, in Sartre. So it's not far <laughs> at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how did you end up in, in Singapore? That's my big question. Yeah, so, so in fact, um, so after this 2008 uh, 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 global financial crisis, I just uh, end up uh, working for uh, in the CIB space, in the corporate investment bank space. And in 2011, uh, I had this opportunity to uh, move to Singapore to uh, develop and set up uh, a financial department with uh, uh, another directors of that uh, French bank. And that's really how uh, I moved to Singapore back in 2011. So I'm just uh, telling you this in, in two minutes. Of course, it took some time, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you work in a big uh, company. But that's really how I moved to, to Singapore uh, 13 years ago. Wow. And so obviously you're staying there. So there's something that you love about Singapore or Asia in general. Uh, for anyone who's kind of considering coming to Asia, what is it that you love about here? And why specifically Singapore? 
If you're watching this and you're a B2B startup founder in Southeast Asia struggling to grow your startup, we have a whole community of founders just like you. And on a weekly basis, we discuss strategies and growth hacks. We'd love to have you amongst us. Feel free to join at nextbigwave.co or find the link in the description. I'll see you there. I will say sometimes we have this uh, joke uh, that we are sharing with uh, with a couple of friends saying that uh, Singapore is the uh, expatriation for dummy. <laughs> uh, and we are saying this because that's that's really, uh, I would say, easy to set up here. If, if you speak English, I would say, in terms of um, uh, state organization and uh, set, I mean, opening up uh, a mobile phone line or um, uh, opening up a bank account or I mean all that I would say is much easier compared to most of the country mm -hmm. uh, it is a business friendly uh, city state uh, Singapore is really part of uh, the top uh, best in class uh, ranking in lots of domain in, 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 in the society mm -hmm. so I would say um, all, all that uh, are the reason why I'm still in Singapore and uh, Singapore is home here I have my wife my son my company so yeah uh, and have you considered any other places in Southeast Asia? Once you you know you made the dummy move, like the easy yeah. move from west to east, <laughs> have you considered other less easy countries? I mean, I find to be Thailand to be very easy to move to, but yeah, yeah. Have you considered anything else? I had this opportunity to move uh, early uh, before 2011 to go to uh, Hong Kong and uh, or China mainland. And for some reason, finally, I, I stayed in, in France. And um, so, yeah, I could have had this opportunity to go to 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 to, uh, to Hong Kong. Or even I had an opportunity to go to India. But finally, uh, life uh, has decided uh, in a different uh, way. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So, you know, you've been in corporate banking for a long time. Yep. And how did you end up, you know, deciding to co-found what you're working on right now, which is called Trade Together, which is in the DeFi space. Mm -hmm. And sort of how did the, your experience in corporate banking shape the approach of building a digital asset management company? Does that's an awesome question. I guess, Tim, all that was a, a process. Um, and uh, we are all unique. We are all like a masterpiece. We all have our own uh, journey and, and story. But I think on my side... Uh, I'm, I'm using the word process because I think I had uh, to validate uh, a couple of steps personally prior to take this decision to move uh, and to, uh, to uh, run and to develop a trade together. Um, so if you look backward from 20, uh, 2008 all the way to 2021 when we started uh, trade together with my co-founder Jordan Co., uh, you, you, you may realize that uh, I had multiple positions from front office, uh, middle office, uh, risk, uh, and, and all that combined ending up with a supervising uh, product from a mm -hmm. risk side has uh, provided me the, the, the confidence that I need to develop, I will even say almost blindly, try together. Meaning, mm -hmm. when we started to, uh, to develop this, uh, this company, I knew exactly what to do. Like from A to Z, at least I was convinced uh, I had this roadmap. Uh, I knew what to do, how to do it. And, uh, and I was convinced that it was important for me to do it in an independent manner, meaning not linked to a large financial institution, but really doing it on my own. Yeah. Right. And I think we discussed this, but you already had a little bit of exposure in the crypto space prior to launching this, like on a personal yeah. level, right? Yeah. So short short response to this is yes. And to be honest with you, uh, Tim, I think it's the first time I'm sharing I'm sharing this in a podcast. My first meetup with crypto was back in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, it is five years after the the global financial crisis. So I was formatted, Tim. I was formatted to reject. Uh, this cryptocurrency that was called Bitcoin, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, for the reason for the reason uh, of uh, 2008, uh, we didn't know who was uh, who was uh, the founder of it, except maybe Satoshi uh, mm -hmm. Nakamoto. Um, the only tangible piece behind Bitcoin was the fact that it was an open source uh, software uh, registered in MIT, which was good. But from from a banking lens, 
risk assessment, uh, it was not enough. So I said, no, I don't want to touch this. So it is not only uh, after 2016 in the financial industry that I had my experience in cryptocurrency, uh, really from a, from a FI and a risk uh, lens. And, as, as, and then I started to really understand the, how powerful it was. Yeah, so before we, we kind of expand on that, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what Trade Together is so that, you know, if the audience wants to play catch up, at least they know the context of our conversations. Yeah, of course. So uh, and we, we should have maybe started by that. So, so basically, Trade Together, uh, you're right, is uh, a company that was uh, developed to help uh, customers to have exposure to the Web3 space uh, based on their risk tolerance and risk appetite. Uh, so the sociology uh, and the persona of of, uh, of, uh, of trade together is typically someone uh, who has already invested in the real estate, in stocks, uh, why not in bonds, uh, but doesn't really uh, feel the time, doesn't really have the time, uh, and doesn't really feel the courage to manage the wallet aspect of it, uh, the research that goes with it, and uh, being a little bit... Uh, uh, scared about potential scam or potential cybersecurity aspects. So, so Trade Together is really this uh, all-in-one platform allowing you to have fund uh, exposure to Web3, uh, mm -hmm. such as uh, digital bonds uh, and, and DeFi type of, uh, of vault, mm -hmm. and at the same time to uh, potentially uh, purchase uh, some form of uh, cryptocurrencies in a non-custodial manner. And, uh, and one day to have access to traditional finance products such as ETF, all in one. Okay, cool. So, and I mean, you know, uh, obviously there's a ton of crypto asset management platforms out there. What's uh, one of the features or philosophies that makes Straight Together stand out right now in the market? I think uh, uh, philosophically speaking, uh, the very first uh, aspect, uh, I would say, is around uh, regulatory uh, matter. Mm -hmm. uh, from scratch, team, uh, what we uh, decided to do at Trade Together was really to uh, comply with the rules, meaning uh, uh, presenting from A to Z who we are, what we do, how we are planning to do this business to the regulator in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and why? Because we consider that uh, in the long run, if you don't collaborate and you don't cooperate uh, with uh, with a society representative and the society representative in the financial industry is a regulator. Right. Uh, like uh, like uh, uh, in other society, you're going to have a parliament member representing you in a government. Uh, in the financial industry, it's a regulator. So we had to comply with them. And I think uh, that's really what uh, differentiates us. And also, uh, number two, team, I think that's super important. Uh, we are working uh, to fight or at least to reduce all these fragmented services. Because everyone end up having a, a little bit of asset uh, in uh, Optimism or, or Arbitrum or mm. Ethereum or whatever blockchain. Uh, someone is doing this on this platform, another one is doing that on another platform. It's totally... Uh, segregated and, and fragmented we are trying to bring that up in one place that's really what we do makes sense and you were talking about the regulatory uh, sort of aspects in singapore i want to talk more broadly about southeast asia mm. i know that you know in europe and north america there are challenges but there are also a lot of opportunities to be kind of uh, forward thinking in terms of building crypto and web3 in general is it harder in Southeast Asia around like the cultural and regulatory challenges, or do mm -hmm. you think there's more opportunities in Southeast Asia now than the rest of the world for crypto? Yes, it's a fantastic question also. So I will say that in Singapore, um, uh, the, the, the rules are extremely strict and mm -hmm. uh, you better understand what you do uh, first prior to uh, launch your business, that's for sure. Uh, but, but I will say, there is a room for innovation um, in this uh, roof of uh, framework and policies uh, uh, managing uh, all the digital assets. Uh, if, again, you take the time to, to sit down properly and to explain what you are, what do you intend to do, what you are planning to do. So mm -hmm. if I extend this to uh, the rest of Southeast Asia region, I will say that... Um, what I like in, in, uh, in Singapore and in the rest of the region is uh, uh, people's capacity to uh, 
embrace uh, innovation, to embrace new ideas, uh, and potentially people in this region are less conservative uh, compared to uh, whole society, uh, potentially France, even if we have, uh, even if in France or Germany or European countries, people are maybe a little bit more conservative, a little bit more, uh, um, yeah, uh, I, I think people are more open to, to uh, foreign ideas compared to Europe or uh, why not US as well. Oh, it's funny you say that because in traditional startup scene, I'm hearing the opposite that, you know, investors are relatively tight and, and conservative in their ideas. Like blue ocean businesses have a lot of harder time to raise money and to, to penetrate the markets mm -hmm. uh, than traditional businesses. So crypto being so advanced in terms of how it works and, and do you think the, the openness to it or the eagerness to, to adopt it is because of people being curious about the technologies or just chasing, you know, monstrous gains at this point? Yeah. Uh, well, I would say it depends really about uh, who are you speaking to, uh, what type of business exactly are you doing, and uh, maybe there is a little bit of luck, but I think on my side, if I'm... Uh, if I'm uh, look backwards since 2021, I remember that uh, when I discussed with VCs back in 2021, their first question uh, for sure was, okay, what's your traction? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you plan to do this? How do you plan to do that? And there was no question re related to uh, risk, no question related to uh, insurance or things, things mm -hmm. of that nature. I will say, if now I'm looking uh, with uh, with uh, family offices, uh, sometimes fifth generation, uh, sixth generation of a, a whole very old family office, uh, family well established in Asia, uh, this person asked me what was my policy, what was my regulatory plan, and so on. So it again it depends on what's your plan, how do you introduce yourself, what do you what what what's your uh, end game finally. And uh, at least on my side, I managed to find people with whom to match. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned investors. You've been in business a little over three years now. Can you walk us through what stages you're at? Um, yeah. Did you go through different funding rounds? What does your user base look like? Are you operating mostly in Southeast Asia? I, I kind of want to know more about the business. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, so, yeah, we... We started uh, in 2021 with a pre-seed that was uh, ended up in May 2022, and uh, we managed to oversubscribe. We wanted to raise uh, half a mil, and we managed to get uh, 690k. Uh, then we had 2022 and 2023 that was pretty difficult in the crypto industry, mm -hmm. uh, but we uh, managed to uh, find a way, and uh, so we completed our seed round. Uh, three months ago and we have uh, in total raised uh, something around 1.5 mil US okay. mm -hmm. yeah and uh, we have signed our uh, biggest client since inception like uh, two months ago uh, so um, yeah that, that's pretty much the trajectory where we are and uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, break even pretty soon that, that's the plan Oh, that's a very good trajectory. And when you say you signed the client, so from my understanding, originally it was like a B2C business where people would leverage your platform to get into crypto. But when you mention a client, I feel like there's a B2B angle to it as well. Am I right? You're absolutely right, Tim. Uh, we have a B2C angle, B2B angle. So meaning uh, we can sign a mandate with an institution or multifamily office to manage uh, uh, a mandate of uh, asset in trench uh, okay. in a different type of uh, fund vehicle from uh, uh, what we call conservative all the way to aggressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is an element of advis advisory as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so for now, uh, our platform is really open to individual accredited investors, but also uh, we can serve uh, institutions. So that's where it comes from. Nice. So it's, you know, it sounds to me like you're really bridging the gap between traditional finance or TradFin trad fin and, and decentralized or crypto. Uh, is that kind of what you're doing? Like you're an, a, a way for people to step in really to the to this crypto world? 
exactly. Some people will say we are uh, really a, a sort of uh, web 2.5, um, especially also because we receive funds uh, into a bank account, fiat. We can also receive in wallet, mm. but most of our clients, sociologically speaking, uh, have their assets in, in, in traditional world. Uh, and uh, we like this type of position uh, being in between uh, the best of uh, the crypto space, Web3 space, and the best of TradFi, because it is true that uh, I bring in my luggage uh, more than a decade of uh, traditional finance experience. Yeah. Yeah, and, and your experience was really spanning over risk management a lot before, uh, which is not something that's discussed a lot in, in DeFi, and you mentioned it earlier, your investors didn't even ask about it. But how have you been able to incorporate this risk management uh, uh, experience into your approach to uh, managing Chris crypto instead of trad, trad fi? I think that was the very first element that uh, we uh, we implemented uh, with my uh, co-founder uh, back in 2021, mm -hmm. and uh, it consists of um, a library of uh, of controls, uh, scenarios, and and potential failures that uh, we may put uh, into a, into a note okay mm -hmm. and that we're gonna combine uh, and and then establish some risk on on it for uh, elements such as a token uh, a protocol uh, and and all the risk that uh, potentially may uh, appear uh, toward this ecosystem okay so 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 essentially that's that's really um if if you look at our risk framework, if you are familiar with what what's going on in AWS or, or in a tradition in a traditional bank, that's really a combination of of both with uh, some cybersecurity risk element, operational risk element, compliance element, uh, market risk element, liquidity risk element, and all that combined. Yeah. So, you know, there's this big difference between TradFi and DeFi. And I'm like, when I talk to some of my friends who are working in crypto, but like on, on actual protocols and things in their mind, the traditional financial system will die within the next 10 to 20 years, depending how bullish yeah. people are. Do you believe in that? Do you think there's a place for both of them to coexist or what's your vision on this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I totally get uh, your, uh, I totally get uh, your uh, friends and uh, points, and I, I heard that multiple times. Um, I, I I don't believe uh, in a, a world where just uh, the new players that were born uh, just in 2014 uh, or 2018 or even 2021 mm -hmm. uh, will have survived all the madness and and finally. Uh, Will replace uh, the existing traditional traditional finance. I think we are here to um, to to serve different uh, interests and different people. We are here to uh, innovate the way we serve customers, whether it is uh, through the form of correspondent banking. So if you if you look at some historical players such as Ripple or XRP. Mm -hmm. uh, when they arrived in 2014, or the, the idea was to replace totally correspond banking and SWIFT, which is a protocol that we are using every day. Mm -hmm. um, Ten years later, SWIFT is still around, obviously, and um, and uh, USD is still around. And, and the, the biggest, the number one tokenization uh, that may ever exist uh, since inception, we are talking about tokenization, is, is the tokenization of a USD. Of a currency. Yeah, USDT. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's hilarious. So, exactly. So I think we can't we can't compare uh, hundred trillions uh, USD uh, dollars rail and 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 a way to to operate across two hundred countries mm -hmm. uh, versus uh, WhatsApp disrupting SMS. It it is much. I'm not saying that it was it was not complex to do that. WhatsApp was mm -hmm. a revolution. Uh, Telegram is a revolution, but 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 you don't replace uh, a 70 years uh, old rail and and network and correspondent banking industry in 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 three years or even in ten years. It's it is a maturity stage. So to me, the end game will really um, happen where uh, the top ten banks 
are using or are adopting in-house blockchain and are using mm -hmm. it every day, even in the retail space, in the retail banking space. And uh, and of course, players like us, who I, who I hope uh, will have uh, comply with the rules across the world, will also uh, survive and 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 just uh, coexist all yeah. together. Yeah, I think that's a fair and very well risk managed response. <laughs> I can see where you're back now. <laughs> I love it. So let's talk more about, you know, your, your experience as a startup founder. Now, when you're like in the seed stages, usually startup founders I speak to, they're sort of like, I either just have figured out or are still close to figuring out their go-to market strategy. Yeah. Do you feel like you're there yet? You know, are you still figuring things out? Where do you stand on that? Yeah. Um, so, so I guess we we've done uh, hard work on our side uh, to uh, again to comply with the rules. We are running our business uh, with uh, what we call a MIS exemption with our restricted schemes. Uh, and the next step for us, uh, beyond the, the notion of having a product market fit and to scale, mm -hmm. is also for us to have the full license. Uh, and uh, we hope to have it uh, touch wood uh, uh, soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, And I think uh, all that, uh, team, if I make uh, take this parallel, is really like a, a form of uh, avenue, uh, a way that you built step by step. And once you have the formal authorization, because you have done the test, uh, the penetration test, vulnerability, all the cars can pass then. Okay. Right. So that's what we are building right now. Uh, and I think we are close to that uh, typing point for us. You know, this, okay. uh, sing this, this uh, singularity point uh, for trade together. And I think we are close to that. And um, and to be honest with you, uh, I, I love to, I mean, I, I have a good relationship with my investors, really. And uh, we won't be there uh, if they were not behind us. My, my goal, instead of thinking really uh, series A and whatever, is to become profitable thanks to this product market fit. And this is our right. goal here. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Um, you know, one thing that I, I, I have to ask is because I've spoken with many founders about their growth strategies, but crypto and financial advisory is sort of a tricky one because you can't do any advertising. Uh, what What are the ways you're growing right now, and how do you yeah. perceive that scaling? I'm very yeah, curious. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, we've been super cautious uh, with this uh, angle of uh, not advertising in your face. Uh, when I'm saying in your face, in, in people's uh, face, mm -hmm. uh, our product, uh, buy this, buy that, because uh, again, we are not a bakery. Uh, we are not a bakery uh, shop, and, <laughs> and I, we have to understand that we are dealing with people's money. We have to be cautious. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the way we uh, we deal with that is uh, for us to uh, raise awareness about what we do and our uh, value proposition through conferences, mm -hmm. uh, through uh, uh, dedicated articles, uh, and particular events where People hear about our uh, business, what we do, and that's really how we grow uh, step by step. Uh, now, once we will get the full license, we'll be a little bit more open to, to doing more advertising, uh, okay. targeted type of uh, reaching out uh, customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there are lots of uh, ways to, to, to do this, and, uh, and we have the, the right marketing uh, staff to, to help us with that. Yeah. Nice. I'm curious, are you currently doing or allowed to do sort of secondhand advertising, meaning like advertising lead magnets, like white papers, webinars, and things like that, and then capturing your audience through those and then then acquiring them as, as clients? So by law, uh, at least for Singapore, uh, we can, uh, but uh, there is a there is a a sort of caveat to this, we, we need to make sure that if we onboard these uh, clients, we need to make sure that if they reside in Singapore, uh, they are not retail customers and they are what we uh, call uh, accredited investors or uh, institution or relevant right. uh, entity. When you are outside of Singapore, that's different. That's uh, because it's a different regime. But at least mm -hmm. in Singapore, it works that way for us. Uh, we Singapore doesn't encourage actually uh, the society to really uh, 
touch uh, retail product at least at this stage maybe mm -hmm. maybe later on but we have to understand that it takes time and uh, we have to follow that principle yeah yeah makes sense and like you know just brainstorming founder to founder here like yeah. what are you struggling with at the most in your business it can be re growth related or not i'm just curious to see if i can bring you some value while we're on the pod oh thank you so much um i think it's it's always uh, this um this uh, distortion between raising more uh to have uh, even more capacity from an engineering uh, lens uh, to go uh, faster in what we want to do mm -hmm. uh, versus not diluting ourselves too much and just wait for the revenues to grow even bigger so that we just uh, take uh, that money from our own our own uh, right. uh, cook <laughs> and yes. we can yeah so that's really that's really uh, the sort of dilemma that I have uh but but again i'm here in the long term and and if you look at uh, some some famous uh, financial industry they didn't develop such business in just two years so we have to for be sure. patient yeah for sure another yeah. option though because you're in the crypto space and i don't know about the regulation in singapore but doing a token release would help you finance some of these operations without diluting yeah. yourself yeah. Uh, maybe creating a DAO around your organization and really uh, embracing the whole crypto notion of, of, of DeFi. I mm -hmm. don't know if you considered that. That's a fantastic question. And uh, I've, I'm, I receive almost every month uh, a proposal for, uh, for Try Together to issue a token. <laughs> uh, you, you will find interesting uh, teams that uh, people who are the most cautious when it comes to issue a token generally i've worked in in fine in the financial industry for years and yeah. uh and 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 i think there are lots of advantages of uh, of uh, issuing a token uh of course if it works well okay uh but there are also lots of inconvenience potentially mm -hmm. uh, meaning if let's say your uh, token uh, doesn't work uh, the way you you expected and it start to it keep dumping uh, you you may risk uh, you may face a reputational risk yeah, yeah. Uh, it may enough. be difficult to raise uh, additional funds uh, and and most importantly i guess you need to have that uh, what are we say in french in french je ne sais quoi mm -hmm. uh, this uh, this really particular uh, tokenomics mm -hmm. that works not to just create another token out of 30,000 existing tokens out there if you see what I mean yeah. I, so, I completely agree with you but yeah. that is the one way to finance your operations and oh, yeah, it's sure. not easy but uh, you know when you have a, a, an existing business a reputation of following clients you're a real business, you know, and you can prove it. The crypto space usually responds fairly well to those, given all the meme coins out there. It's yeah. rare to see a real business offering real value. As, as you said, you have to figure out the tokenomics, etc. But I've seen, you know, companies do it quite successfully before. No, 100%. Number two, uh, let's rediscuss that together once we get the full license. Yeah. And uh, number three, uh, uh what you, what you say here uh, resonates definitely with uh, some of my investors suit <laughs> mm -hmm. try to I'm get sure. the investors suit as well <laughs> so let's let's discuss that uh, of 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 the record later on <laughs> uh, sure yeah, yeah. I, i'm not sure if i can bring much value in terms of execution but i, I just know that it's uh, probably an interesting avenue to go yeah. through um uh, i'm curious as well because uh i've never actually had a proper mentor but a mm -hmm. lot of the founders I speak to, they swear by it. And have you been using a mentor? And what's your experience of that? Oh, that's a good one as well. Um, so I, I've never had proper mentor and mentorship uh, during my uh, professional career before Trade Together. Post Trade Together, I mean, or when I started Trade Together, uh, I re I realized that uh, I had, and I still have so many mentors. It's it's not, but it's not in the by virtue of uh, signing a contract like you are my mentor. It's it's just it's more about people 
who had just a, a huge experience uh, when it comes to to advice or to or people who managed to uh, just bring me a, a form of um, a form of uh, of uh, confidence, relaxation, a form of just uh, helping me uh, at the right time when I need it. And mm-hmm. and I, and, I, and I can found that in lots of investors, advisor to the board, um, all the way to my wife. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> yeah. Is she in business too, or she's giving you like a different type of viewpoint? She's music teacher. <laughs> perfect. That's, that's actually perfect because you don't yeah. always want to be in an echo chamber, right? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So, so I think it's uh, it is definitely. Uh, uh, important in your uh, career, at least as entrepreneur. To me, uh, I would have never uh, survived uh, without having a mentor uh, toward me and strong people uh, with me. Yeah. Lovely. And yeah. you know, I think uh, you know, founders are pretty intense human beings. You have to be sturdy. You have to really have drive. Yeah. Are you using any sort of life hacks or optimizations in your life to? perform as well as possible. Like I've met people who don't drink alcohol, other mm. people who do nootropics, like anything you do in your life. Meditation. Yeah, so, maybe. so there is something I'm doing in, in my life and it's, <clears throat> it's a form of meditation. It's a form of, uh, lots of, uh, ingredients that I need. It's, a uh, it's, a uh, it's a one hour jogging, uh, that I'm having, uh, in Singapore, uh, near my place where I don't have any, uh, any watch, uh, uh, any, any mobile phone. I don't monitor anything. I just know that I go there for an hour and I'm going to do my jogging. And that's, uh, my safe place, my safe zone where I just recharging myself. And, uh, I'm doing this, uh, twice a week. And that's super critical for me uh, as a as a human being to just uh, recharge reconnect with myself um and I, I i really need that yeah it's like a mix of exercise grounding and technology detox at the same time right yeah you you, you just uh, said the truth exactly yeah yeah i think that's great i think that's fantastic yeah. uh i i've tried all sorts of things and and you know it's always an experimenting thing but yeah for me sports is probably the most important one as well yeah uh Absolutely. sweet man so you know we've powered through a lot of content actually yeah. in this episode um i've really enjoyed it i i love chatting with people who are doing innovative stuff and like i said crypto is completely underrepresented on my podcast so i was super yeah. glad to have you on um before we sort of wrap things up, is there anything you want to shout out to um, business partner, investors, wife, or all of yeah. the above? No, so, so first of all, shout out to uh, to your podcast. I'm really impressed uh, about the, the professionalism behind it. Um, you just uh, started this show like six months, seven months ago. And again, mm-hmm. uh, I'm watching lots of shows, but I think this one is super pro. So, so wow. shout, Appreciate out, it, shout man. out to you. Um, you. What else? Um, Okay, let, let me let me uh, be a little bit disruptive here. If the regulator is uh, <laughs> is uh, listening to this podcast, we are waiting for you <laughs> uh, to to give the blessing. No, I'm 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 super excited about uh, this, this quarter four of 2024. We're gonna have the Singapore fintech festival, uh, so it's going to be amazing again to meet up with lots of people. Uh, I would like to thank all my investors uh, who are just. Uh, more than amazing. I think I don't have enough uh, vocabulary to, to thank them. And uh, yeah, uh, life is good. Life is good. Market is Beautiful. pretty cool. We are yes. healthy. Can't complain, you know. Love it. Thanks for having me. I love the positivity. Uh, no, thanks, Jeff, for being on the pod. Really appreciate it. And that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>